Today, I'm going to show you how to absolutely destroy the Scandinavian defense if you are an E4 player as a white. It's one of the most annoying openings you can face, but I'm going to show you a system, a complete system, that does two things. Number one, it's going to take your opponents out of their comfort zone. It's going to take them into unknown territory very quickly. And number two, it's going to lead to aggressive attacking positions where you can work on your tactics and checkmate your opponent's king early in the game. This is going to be a lot... Uh, Bobby Fisherman? Why are you interrupting my video? Oh, Chess Adventures is back and Peter Potts are an average Joe. Oh, cool. Yes, absolutely. I will make sure to let my audience know. Thanks for stopping by. All right, take care. All right, that was weird. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, you're going to have a lot of fun learning this opening on how to destroy the Scandinavian. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so first things first, when your opponent plays a Scandinavian and you take this, you are immediately stepping into territory that they are more familiar with than you are. And you just can't really get around this because if they play this every single time they face E4, they're getting a chance to practice this position. But you're only seeing it every once in a while, which is why it's so dangerous for E4 players to actually take the pawn. There's two ways they can take with the queen or they can bring the knight out, okay? And you have to know what to do against both situations. It adds a lot to, to that you have to learn. So what I'm going to be teaching you guys today, and the move that I am recommending, wait for it, here's the secret move, is the move D4. Now, at first glance, you might think, wait, that's a weird move. This is actually what's called the Blackmar Damar Gambit, okay? And it could also arise from the moves D4, D5, and E4, okay? Now, you say, Nelson, why are we doing this? Well, the idea is that it takes your opponent into unknown territory. This is not an opening that Scandinavian players are going to be familiar with, right? They're used to people capturing, and there's a few other lines maybe that they've been familiar with, but this is a totally separate opening. And the positions that you get out of this opening do not look like the positions that you get out of the Scandinavian. They just look totally different. So that is a huge factor that you should not underestimate. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into what's most likely going to happen from this position. Now, first of all, they don't have to take you, but that is by far the most common, and it's the best move for black to accept you. If they don't, they could play like a French defense, but again, a Scandinavian player is not going to want to play a French defense, right? If they did, they would have just played E6 on the first move, so they're probably not going to be familiar with that, okay? And there's not a, a lot of other moves that really make any sense here, so most people are going to take this pawn. Now, after they take the pawn, we're going to simply play the move knight to c3, threatening to regain our pawn. And here, you're most likely going to see knight to f6. This is the most logical move. It's probably the best move for black. They simply develop and they defend the pawn. But I do want to show you briefly, if they try to get very aggressive and defend it with a pawn, this is actually bad. And the reason that this is bad is because they permanently weaken this diagonal and this diagonal, okay? And we are going to be able to take advantage of that over the next couple of moves. So what I want you to do is play the move F3. And this is, you're going to see this. This is a theme in pretty much any line. We're going to follow this up with F3. The point is that we're trying to recapture and get control of the center. And the only way black can really stop us is if they take us. But when they do, we now have a lead in development. We have two pieces out and look at all of black's pieces still sitting on the back, okay? The other thing that we do by, by doing this is this F2 pawn is now gone. And one advantage of that is when we castle kingside, our rook can immediately start playing a role in the game. And another advantage is this diagonal is actually open, which we can use to our benefit. You might think that sounds weird, but trust me, later in the video, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about when I say that, okay? So just keep in mind, we have a lot going for us, even though we're down a pawn temporarily. So as an example, most people are going to follow this up with knight to f6, developing, putting knight behind the pawn. And I want you to play bishop to c4. Remember, I talked about it. They permanently weakened this diagonal. So we need to take advantage of that right away. So we're going to play bishop c4. Let's say they play e6 because they want to get their bishop out. They want to castle. And they're trying to block you off. You're going to simply castle. And after they do something, you're going to start attacking knight to g5. I want you to remember this move when they play f5. Normally, this pawn here on e6 is going to be defended by the f7 pawn, right? It would be sitting here defending it. But because they've moved it, this e6 pawn is a nice target for us. And this is very, very important. It's very, very difficult for black to figure out how to defend this. Actually, there's not a good way. As an example, queen to e7, adding a defender. What do you think we're going to do? We're simply going to play rook e1 and line up again. 
and now blacks out of pieces that can defend it. You have no good way of defending that. You can't try to block our bishop off because this is pinned. I simply take your knight, and you can't recapture, you lose your queen. You, I mean, I, what else can you do? If you try to push it forward, I'm just going to take it. I have a fork, and if you try to take me back, look at this. You've walked into kind of a double pin there. I'm just going to pile up on it. And this is totally winning for white. As an example, if they try to defend, you can simply take it. And queen to d4, you keep attacking. You just keep attacking, and the, the pin just makes it so difficult for black to even do anything. Okay? So they don't really want to do that. And probably, I don't know, most people in this case actually just decide to castle, just abandon it, give it up. But they're still losing because now you take here with the knight. And look at this. You're hitting the rook. You have the bishop lined up. And if they try to trade, it's even worse. The rook comes in and you have the same thing. Look at this. They have to save their queen. They move it somewhere. But then, bam, you unleash the bishop with a check. And you get the queen next move. It's totally crushing. So the point that I want you to take away. And by the way, I'm going to put all these lines in a PGN in the description so you can check it out. Okay? So don't feel like you have to memorize anything. You can go back and review it after. Just focus on the concepts right now. Okay? So the point is that if they do try to defend the pawn going all the way back here with f5, they they create those weaknesses, and we will take advantage of those, like I showed you, castling, bishop c4, and then the knight eventually goes to g5. Okay, that's what you have to remember. Now, most people um, are not going to that they're probably going to play knight to f6, which is a better move. That's okay. I just wanted to show you just in case. We're still going to play the move f3, and it's the same idea. We're going to recapture here, get two pawns in the center if they don't do something about it. So most people are going to take you. You recapture with the knight. And again, we have two pieces out. Black only has one. So a little bit of a lead in development, but also we have the open files in this diagonal, like I mentioned. Now, when you get to this position, you're primarily going to see one of two moves. Okay. So this is, this is important to so listen carefully. Black is either going to decide to use this bishop right away and develop it probably to g4, or they're going to decide, you know what, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just going to play e6, get this bishop out, and try to castle quickly. These are the two primary things that your opponent is going to do. Okay, there, Of course, there are some other moves, but most people, it's going to be one of these two. We're going to start with bishop g4. Okay, If they play bishop g4, I want you to attack that thing right away. Okay, And I want you to remember, you're playing an aggressive opening. You are going to attack black regardless of what they do. And the way we're going to do it here is attack right away. Now, say, Nelson, aren't I weakening my king? You are to an extent, but the knight does a good job of defending those. And even if the knight gets traded, which I'm going to talk about now, you actually are going to follow up with the bishop, and the bishop does a good job of defending as well. And black's not really in a position to take advantage of that, okay? So if they take you, you take uh, with the queen, and you're now threatening on b7, okay? So most players are going to play c6 and stop you from doing that, okay? Now we're going to defend our pawn with bishop to e3. And let's say e6. Black's probably going to try to get this bishop out and castle. You are going to play bishop to d3. And black could do one of two things. They could play bishop e7 or bishop to b4. And your plan is going to be mostly the same in either case. Let's just say they play bishop to b4. You are now going to castle. Let's say they trade it and castle themselves. So what do we have here? We have a position where we have the two bishops against the two knights. But it's kind of an open position. And if you don't know this, bishops are better than knights in open positions. And this is a perfect example of how our bishops are crisscrossing across the board here, controlling so many squares. Black has to be extremely careful. And I'm going to give you a very simple plan here to get you in a really good position. You're going to play the move rook to f2. Black's probably going to develop. And you're going to play rook a to f1. A triple battery is lined up here. Now, that might not seem like much to you, but this is very dangerous for your opponent. I'm going to show you an example of why. A lot of people in this position will play knight to d5, trying to jump their knight around, put some pressure on some of your pieces. What you're going to do here is play the move queen to e4. Why are we doing this? Remember, it's an aggressive opening. We're trying to attack the king. Look at this. Checkmate is being threatened, okay? Black might think, you know what? Knight to f6. Now I'm attacking the queen. I'm defending. This is a great position for me. Wrong. Here we go, back to the power of the battery. We're going to do a double rook sacrifice. We give up one, we give up the other, and at the end of everything, look what we have left. Checkmate to the king. Beautiful, right? Beautiful stuff. So that's just an example of how be on the lookout for sacrifices, be on the lookout for making use of your pieces and checkmating your opponent, okay? So this is your plan. This is a very aggressive position. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
um, and, and you're going to do very well, I think, from that position. So, of course, the bishop didn't have to go to b4, it could have also went to e7, but again, very similar type of thing, okay? You can castle, you can play rook to f2, you can bring the other rook over, same kind of deal, right? Nothing really changes here, we're doing the same exact thing. They could try to play g6 to stop you, but look at this, now your bishop comes in this way, if they try to save their rook, here we see it again, the rooks are ready to go, they come down, and you're about to checkmate the king, okay? Very bad position for black. So, to recap, going all the way back to the original here, we play f3, takes, takes, they can either block this bishop in and try to castle very quickly, or they can play bishop g4. We're going to attack it right away, and I just showed you what happens if they take you. You take here, you bring the bishops to the center, you castle, you triple up on the f file, and you have a lot of fun. Now, you say, what if they don't take me? What if they go back here? If they go back here, g4. Again, we're playing an aggressive opening. You have to go into it with that mindset. You don't slow down, okay? You keep up the pressure. We're going to play g4. They're going to go back. Knight to e5. Why are we going knight to e5? We want the pressure on the bishop, and you're going to see why that's important in just a second. So what is black going to do? I don't know exactly, but probably something, uh, one of two things. They're either going to attack you with their knight, like this, or they're going to play most likely e6, try to get this, this bishop out. So we'll come back to if they attack your knight. Let's start with e6 here. What we're going to do now is play bishop to g2. Threatening to win a rook, they're probably going to play c6 to stop you. Now we're going to play h4, threatening to trap their bishop. Okay, if you look carefully, this guy doesn't have anywhere to go. You can't go to any of these squares. And if we're able to play h5, the bishop is gone. So what is black most likely going to try to do? h6 or h5 to save their bishop. What else can they play? But on either of those moves, now you see why we wanted our knight here. We take it. And what have we accomplished? These light squares are totally destroyed. Okay, they're very weak. And we have a very simple follow-up of queen to d3. And how does black defend this pawn and stop our queen from coming in? There's not a good way. You can try to use your king, but then we would slide our rook over, lining up on the king. If you're wondering why we don't castle, by the way, it's because the king on g1 is actually weaker because you have to worry about stuff like this. It's actually safer here, and maybe you could even castle this way. So we just bring the rook over. And we're threatening to go here and, and attack the knight, which can't move. Black is already in trouble. Black's already in trouble. Going back here, instead of h6, they could have also played h5, but it's the exact same thing. We grab the bishop. And in this case, you can play g5, chasing the knight away. And then guess what? We attack this again. Queen d3 is okay, but I also want to show you this one. Bishop to e4, same idea. Attacking that pawn. How does black defend? There's not a good way. If you try to use your king, watch what happens. The rook comes over again. Then we grab it. And if black is not paying attention, I want to show you something really, really cool. Let's say they just try to develop. Mate in two for white. Can you guys find it? You had a chance to look at that. Bishop to f7, check. King has to go here and checkmate with a pawn because this is taken away by this bishop. This is beautiful stuff. This is move 17, and we just checkmate to black with the pawn on g6. I mean, this is, this is so much fun, right? This is so cool. So going back, okay, all of this happened because as soon as they played bishop g4, we started to be aggressive and we just attacked, all right? So that's what you have to remember. There's two options. I just showed you what to do against both of those. Now, some people who have had bad experiences with playing a move like bishop g4 or whatever decide, you know what? I don't want to move my bishop out. I'm just going to play e6 and take it slow, leave that there, you know, do something like this. Just keep it real simple. I don't want to get into trouble, okay? I'm going to show you what to do if they do that. Bishop to d3, okay? Um, and you're going to see why we're lining up on this pawn in a minute. And I want you to remember, most people who play e6, they're trying to get this bishop out because they want a castle, okay? So we're, we're planning ahead for that by putting our bishop on d3. Let's see, bishop e7, we're going to castle, and they're probably going to castle, Okay? And once they castle, um, I'm going to show you a very, very easy to follow plan that is going to give you so many nice wins. Okay, so here's what the plan is. Queen to e1. Do you remember earlier in the video I said this pawn not being here opened to this diagonal and we could take advantage of that? This is how. Okay, this is how. This is a very common idea in any type of opening where you sacrifice this f pawn early on. King's Gambit. Uh, or this Black Mar Daymar gambit. There's some other gambits that I like to play. But when that pawn is gone, 
The simple move queen to e1 shifts your queen over to this diagonal. Now, why do we care? Because the h4 square for the queen is actually a very dangerous square for it to be on for black because of the possibility of checkmating on h7. Okay, so if you see your opponent castle, you want to be thinking about queen to e1 to h4. Okay, and as an example, let's say black tries to play something like b6. Maybe they're going to fianchetto over here. You're going to bring the queen over to h4. And we're starting to threaten a, a very dangerous checkmate. And if black is not paying attention, they do something like this. Bishop to g5. And now we're threatening to take the knight. And as an example, let's say they don't really know what's going on. They play a move like here. We can take this and look at this. The queen's coming in. And now black has to run. And they, they're barely surviving. Okay? I want to show you another example. If they play the knight here, thinking that, okay, if you take, they'll take back with the knight and it'll still be defended. We have another tactic here in this position. Bishop takes h7 check. Look at this. This is beautiful stuff. You say, why would we do that? Isn't the knight just going to take our bishop? Aha, but look at this. We also have this battery we take here, and we're forking these guys. Okay, so it's super, super dangerous for black. And there's even some situations where you don't even have to use the bishop. You can use the knight to jump in, and you sacrifice the rook there to get checkmate. That's another thing that sometimes will happen. Um, you have to watch out for this. If this is attacked too many times, like if there was knight sitting there or something, maybe you couldn't, but sometimes that. Bishop g5 is probably the easiest. But you see how dangerous queen to e1 to h4 really is for black. Okay. The other thing, going back, um, some people don't play bishop e7. They like to play bishop to b4, play a little bit more aggressive. But guess what? You can do the exact same plan. You don't have to change anything. You castle. They can take you if they want. Doesn't really matter. Guess what we're going to do? Queen to e1, right? This is the, the plan. This is the idea. They're going to do something. Queen to h4. And all of a sudden, black is about to get checkmate and they don't even realize it. Right? A lot of people don't even understand what's happening. Um, by the way, if they ever play h6 to try to stop bishop g5, the best thing to do is just take it. Just sacrifice the bishop and you're ready to checkmate the king. Okay, You've got that set up and your follow-up is probably going to be either knight to g5 or knight to e5 followed by the rook coming over to finish off the game. Okay, I mean, this is this is, this is is when chess is fun, right? When you're playing like this, when you're getting all these really cool checkmates, you're getting to practice your tactics and, and work on, on these types of things. Uh, this is where it's, it's just so much fun, okay? So that's pretty much it, guys. This is going to cover like probably 80% of the responses that you're going to see from opponents we've, we've already talked about, okay? So let's just do a really fast recap because I know that was a lot. But again, PGNs are going to be in the description. Follow along down there, and, and you're going to be just fine. So we switch, okay, from a Scandinavian to a Blackmar, Daymar, Gambit. We don't give Black a whole lot of options. Most people are going to take you. We attack it. They're probably going to defend this way. I already showed you if they play f5, bishop goes to c4, the knight eventually jumps to g5, and you take advantage of the weaknesses, okay? On knight to f6, again, you play f3. You're going to take back here. There's two options. They either play bishop g4 or they play e6. You're going to see this most of the time. This covers the vast majority of options. On bishop g4, immediately go on the offensive. Attack, attack, attack. Okay, we play h3 right away. We're happy if this happens. The queen comes out. Remember, we put the bishops in the center. We castle and we triple up on the f file and we attack. Okay? If they go back, what do we do? g4, keep up the pressure. Knight to e5. Why? Because we want to play bishop g2. We want to play h4 and h5 and trap the bishop. If they stop us, I already showed you this. Boom, you grab it, and then you attack the weaknesses, okay? You push. You can go here. I already showed you this really cool checkmate, right? Rook comes over. Bishop comes in. Boom. And black is in trouble. I'm going fast, but I just, just a recap. And you've got the lines. Take your time. Go through it as slow as you need to with, with the, the PGN, okay? And then the other variation is if they don't bring the bishop out to g4 and they play e6, your plan changes a little bit. You don't have a bishop to attack, so that's why we're not going to do the same thing here. But what we can do is put our bishop on d3, getting ready for the quick castle, right? Queen's going to go to e1 after we castle. It's going to come over, and you're going to use all these pieces to launch a killer attack on the king side, okay? I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I'm going to mention something that I don't usually mention. I am going to put a PayPal link in the description. If you want to support me and the channel, um, I did have a lot of health issues that some of you are aware of. I have a lot of medical bills. And so I'm just going to mention that. That being said, 
Um, if nobody gives anything, we will be just fine. Okay, so please, I'm not like trying to make it seem like, oh no, we, we need help or no, like it's just an option. I'm just mentioning it if you wanna support the channel. The link is down there, but no pressure whatsoever. I hope you guys learned something from this video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.